Hi, everybody. I'm Blaine Gilmer. Welcome to another special edition of the Inside Slant. We are here with a former Georgia Bulldog great, uh, an all-time great at the University of Georgia, Mr. David Pollock, on the phone with us. Pollock, how you doing, man? What's up, my man? Man, it's uh, it, I, I really appreciate you coming on and um, just, you know, huge week this week. I don't think it gets any bigger, does it, with uh, Georgia going to Tuscaloosa? No, uh, this is as good as it gets. I think we all circled this, you know, a long time ago. The date has changed <laughs> and things have changed. And look at uh, the Nick Saban stuff this week with COVID, too. And look at that changing and life changing as, as we speak every day. But uh, we knew this was going to be a huge matchup, two versus three. Um, obviously, there's a lot on the line this week. Kirby versus Nick, uh, Georgia versus Alabama. There's, there's plenty of storylines to go around. Absolutely. And, you know, um, just before we even get into the the storylines and the your keys and all this kind of stuff, I would really like to just talk to you a little bit about a lot of things here around Georgia, covering Georgia football that, you know, people – uh, hot bus hot button issue specifically around you they're like david uh david Pollock, how does he separate you know being a being a, a former georgia grade and all-time georgia grade and, and having to do his job and pick every week how how difficult is that for you man being being that guy that has to objectively pick these games and stuff but also you've got to have that emotional connection still to uga <laughs> oh yeah well, obviously and then you cheer you know it's funny you'll find out as analysts, like me, Kirk, and all of us, we literally cheer for our picks and we want to be right. Um, except for when I pick against Georgia. I don't want to be right. That's the only time I ever want to be wrong. But I think when you, when I was coming into this business, I remember watching Lou Holtz. And I remember him, and he coached at you know, Notre Dame and Arkansas and South Carolina. And I remember him watching him on TV, and every time he picked his number on, every time. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do that when I become a, when I become an analyst. Like I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that because every time he talked, I didn't listen. And so I, I kind of tuned him out and I didn't want to do that. And I, I want people to look at me and go, Hey, that guy tells me what he thinks and what he believes. And there's no nonsense, and no BS. And so, you know, it's kind of the approach I've taken to it. So I don't care. I'm not going to lose any sleep over, over any of that stuff. I'm going to tell you, I think he's going to win the game. I'm always going to cheer for Georgia. Um, obviously, all the time I spent there and, and the connection I had to Georgia, I always cheer for them, always want them to win. I'm always, like, pulling for them and have had my heart ripped out of my chest in the national championship game against them in Alabama years ago, and it was the worst feeling ever doing post-game. That was the hardest thing I've ever done is do a post-game story on Nick Saban about, oh, my God, what an unbelievable job of putting in Tua and winning the national championship. And I'm in my heart, in my socks, you know, from – from losing because it, it would have meant for Georgia and the struggles have been through all those years and would have meant for my alma mater. So, you know, it's definitely, um, you know, you, you have your heart, but you also have a job that you're, that you're paid to do and that you, that I take a lot of pride in doing it correctly. And that means not being a Georgia homer or through a Georgia lens. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel honestly and, and, and hopefully respectfully. Absolutely, man, and and uh, it's quite obvious that that you and Kirk and all those guys, y'all y'all are doing uh, doing that, and absolutely trying to give people the the most honest your honest interpretation of what's going to happen before the game. So, speaking of that, let's get right into it. Um, you know, it's really kind of the unstoppable force versus the immovable object here with um, with you know Alabama's offense and Georgia's defense. That's the big you know narrative coming into the game. How are you kind of seeing things uh, between that matchup specifically to start off with? Well, I, I think the game, obviously the game, that's going to decide to be a big deciding factor in the game. To me, um, there's one key matchup to watch. Instead of going position by position and boring the crap out of everybody, um, to me, the slot receiver, the inside receiver will decide this game. Jalen Waddle versus Stevenson versus Webb versus whoever else Georgia puts in there. Um, I think Georgia's going to hold up just fine at corner. they got multiple guys that can rotate in and out, they can play, that you trust. Um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a slot receiver that, that's a playmaker that's going to get screens, that's going to get slot saved and different things that, you know, that will decide it. Because Georgia's defensive line is so good and so talented and they can rotate in and out. And um, But if I had to pick a, a, an area that I think is the most vulnerable, that would be the matchup. 
Absolutely, man. You know, I mean, just those slot the slot receivers just in themselves are are hard. I mean, it doesn't matter necessarily who that 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 position just defending it in football with two way goes and all that kind of stuff absolutely is uh you know just unbelievable part of the game and a big advantage for offenses here. So in terms of you know in terms of up front uh with with Mac Jones, I mean I know that Mac Jones has been able to just pick people apart. Um, but I'm not quite sure that he's faced a consistent wave of pressure like he's going to see uh, Saturday night in Tuscaloosa. So do you do you see Georgia finally being able – they've been so close in past years against Alabama of pressuring the quarterback but not being able to get them, get them down to the ground and kind of, you know, come home on it. Uh, what do you, what do you, how do you see that dynamic ending up in this game? This is the best pass rush Georgia's had in a long time. Um, I think they got a guy um, that, that's a double-digit sack, sack type guy, and I, I would say they might even have multiple guys that you could see. Now, listen, this year's a, a shortened season and a different season, but Adam Anderson's a difference maker. Um, when you watch him, he's six six. He's only two thirty, two forty, but he can rush the passer in passing situations. They can drop him in cover and use him as a disguise if they want to. But he's legit. Um, I mean, dude, I could I could go to Aziz. I could go to. Nolan Smith, I could go to Travion Walker, I could go to Jalen Carter. Like, there's so many guys that I feel like can get out to the quarterback and, and make life very difficult. Now, in order to do that, you have to stop Najee Harris. Um, you know, he's one of the best backs in college football, and credit to him, that, that didn't develop so well over the years, man. He was just an athlete when he got there, and, and then he started to learn to run and be more patient and find holes, and now he's a great receiver out of the backfield just to add into the mix of I'm a pain in your butt offense. Now he can do that. So um, I definitely think that um, when you look at that side of the football, you have to affect Matt Jones. You have to get after him a little bit. Georgia is more equipped to do that than they've been in years past and in a long, long time with the depth and the specialty guys they have. Absolutely. Uh, that thing is going to be absolutely, you know, unbelievable matchup between that huge offensive line of Alabama and the, that relentless defense in front of Georgia. Um, you know, finally, man, I did, I wanted to talk about, you know, Georgia's offense. I know I heard you talk in a, a podcast earlier this week talking about Stetson Bennett hitting 20 miles per hour on GPS. I mean, what? I mean, what? People don't even realize Crazy. that. <laughs> no, I don't realize. I mean, you know, it's just the light skin analogy. You know, that's what it is. It's, you know, if you're a light skin guy, it's usually you're, you're a try hard. Like Wes Walker is smart, you know, heady. Sits down the right route, you know, but Justin's an athlete, man. He's not, he's not big, but his feet will play a big part in this game. And his ability to, to run his own read and keep the ball sometimes and run the jet read and keep the ball sometimes and, um, to make plays when they're, when they're, uh, when they're not there, you know, when something's covered initially, can he, can he scramble and can he go by and make plays? So I think that, um, you know, it's, it, that Georgia's offense is, is going to be a lot better off in four weeks you know, three or four weeks than it is right now, and it's going to continue to grow and evolve because so many offensive linemen you're breaking and you're still breaking in a rapport with your with your quarterback. So there's a lot that has to continue to to develop. But um, the Stetson's going to have to play great, and his speed is going to be a big part of the game plan. Absolutely. Uh, and when you finally, uh, when you talk about, you know, being able to uh, – affect that Alabama defense, which has struggled this year, not just against Ole Miss. They've struggled in general, like uh, in terms of tackling and, and other things like that. Um, do you think the talent level, even though the, the the execution hadn't necessarily been there, do you think the talent level has evened out between Georgia and Alabama where Georgia doesn't absolutely have to play a perfect game this time, but if they just are who they are and don't make any just critical mistakes, that, that they're able to get some movement on the Alabama defense? One thousand percent. The, the talent gap is has closed. Um, Bama's defense is not even close at, at the safety positions to, or defensive line position as it used to be. Um, you know, it, it, listen, you can't just line up and beat Alabama. But if you've watched Missouri and A and M and 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 then Ole Miss last week, if you line up and use motion and shift and do that kind of stuff where you make them have to communicate multiple times on a possession. That's how you beat Bama. You, you, you can do a really good job of that. I'm very interested. Munkin's going to have his hands full, and he's got to do a good job of of using those shifts and using those motion and using Bennett and all those different things he can to, 
to use him to his advantage. It's an important part of of uh, of winning the ball game. He's got to be able to do that stuff. It's it's, it's critically important. So Bama's not defensively what they used to be by by any stretch, but they're still really good. You know, they're still an elite defense. There's still a, a defense in college football that isn't playing much defense right now. There's still a defense that's really good. And by the way, are going to have a bunch of guys called in the in the first round and second round of the draft, just like they had in years past. But it's definitely not at the level we've seen um, some of these Alabama defenses in the past. Absolutely. Do you think uh, now your 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 friend, your guy Desmond Howard, you know, puts this you know bombshell out there on Twitter saying he thinks Saban will be on the sideline? But uh, from all indications I'm hearing, I don't think he will be. I don't know what Desmond's hearing, but um, if he's not there with that Alabama defense already having a little bit of identity crisis this year, do you think that is just more people? you know, making too much out of it, saving not being there? Do you think it actually has an indelible impact on this game? Well, I, I don't think Desmond has any inside knowledge. I think Desmond's just saying that's what he thinks is going to happen. I think he's saying that he thinks that uh, that Nick will find a way to weasel his way on the field. I don't <laughs> think he will. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think he'll be on the field. I think it's I, – I think it's a uh, – I, I think and, – and by the way, it makes a huge impact, an enormous impact. Like, this is a guy that's critically involved in every factor of the game. Um, you know, every factor from coin toss to fourth downs to special teams to defensive adjustments to offensive adjustments. I mean, it's, he's got his hands and everything runs through Nick. So it's definitely going to be interesting to watch. By the way, we're minus 30 in the second half versus um, Alabama, the last two matchups, because of great adjustments. Because of not, what, what did he do? He went to his backup quarterback twice. I mean, think about that. And, and you've got to be there in the moment to see that and look in people's eyes and understand what you're getting from them. So if he's not there, heck yeah, it makes a difference. It makes an enormous difference. Absolutely. And then uh, finally, one other little piece of, uh, of – you know, Georgia sports, not necessarily Georgia football. I wanted to talk to you about. I'm assuming being a Georgia guy, uh, you know, born and raised, I'm assuming you're a Braves fan. I, I am, but I'm not, a, I'm not a knowledgeable Braves fan. I, I'm sitting there last night and I was watching the game and I'm just, uh, I was blown away because I just, it, it's a fun group to watch. You know, it's a, fun, it's a, like, it's not boring with, with, when you got a Kenyan, um, when you got all these guys that can fly, like, they can, they can, they make Albies. They make the game fun. Like it's, it's kind of enjoyable to watch. I'm not a, I'm not a big baseball fan because, bro, I'm ADD as a gift and I can't stand still for, for, for hours at a time. It just doesn't work with my personality. But it's been a fun group to watch. How crazy is that? Three one, let's go. Oh yeah, and the, well, the only thing I was going to point out to you is before you guys make your picks on game day tomorrow and all that kind of stuff, just kind of watch that Braves game tonight because if the Braves win tonight and go to the World Series. Georgia, Georgia, the last like three or four years, they've usually lose the weekend after the Braves lose a playoff series. So this whole new Braves winning playoff series, it may be, you know, it may be the special recipe for Kirby and everybody to to get over the hump with Alabama. Okay. All right. <laughs> So, so that so you're telling me that it all hinges on the Braves tonight. It all hinges. It all hinges on the Braves. The Tuscaloosa outcome okay. is going to come on down to the. Bra I'm just playing with you, man. But now, all right, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch the Braves game tonight, and I'm going to make. I'm going to change my pick, whatever, whatever way I need to change my pick to, to make sure it's I'm covered. Because and I'm telling everybody in the world, you said so. <laughs> I got you, man. Well, uh, David, I I appreciate you uh, joining us. I know time's valuable, and uh, guys, this has been um, another edition of Bulldog Illustrated's The Inside Slant with uh, David Pollitt this week, and uh, we'll catch you next time here on the Bulldog Illustrated YouTube channel.